Welcome back to Camp Witch Doctor. This is going to be the first video on how to add your weapon. So now your weapon is not powered uh, by a gear motor like the drive is. It's actually powered by a servo. So go ahead and find the servo in your kit. It's a little black box. Yeah, perfect. Obviously, you see this is a servo, and it has a PWM cable, just like your speed controllers. What do you think that's going to plug into? The red, the red box? Yeah, so this wire is going to, you're right, this red <laughs> wire is going to plug into there, but this cable, since it's a PWM cable, that's going to plug into your receiver. Now, normally, the PWM cable would have this wire built in, right? Um, this servo actually draws so much power that it's not enough to get the power from the receiver. So we're going to go ahead and connect that red wire directly to the battery so we can get as much power as possible to the servo, because your weapon is pretty powerful. Now, a servo is a little bit different than just a gear motor, because you'll notice in this link, what, what part do you think is missing in that? Right, we have the servo, we have the receiver. What other part would you have if this was your drive system? Let's say? Oh, the speed controller. Yeah, perfect, exactly. So that's because the speed controller is actually built into the servo. So in this black box, you actually have a motor, you have a gearbox, and you have uh, that control board that's going to be your speed control. Now, we, when we worked with the motors, when you push the stick forward, the wheel just keeps falling, right? It just keeps spinning and spinning and spinning. A servo doesn't quite work like that. You'll notice when we talked about the transmitter, we mentioned that this stick has a spring return in both directions for your drive. So as you're going forward, if you let go, the stick goes back to zero. On this side, however, for your uh, weapon, when you move the stick up, there's no spring. It actually stays where it is. And that's really good for how the servo works. So for the servo, you know, on this side, on the drive, if you just left the stick in the middle and you pushed it down, you'll notice your stick is gone. Here, if you move it to the center, the servo would actually rotate to the center and it's going to hold that position. So the servo is a little smarter. It actually knows where it is. So let's say you're going to build a hammer, right, which is happens to be the robot that you're building. When you go backwards and forwards, the hammer will swing backwards and forwards, but it'll keep that position. If we had it on a normal motor without a servo, and you push down, the hammer would swing down, but then it would hit your robot and keep trying to go down, even though it can't go down anymore. So the servo has limits on either end, so it's going to work much, much better for us. Now, we mentioned that this uh, needs more power. So we're going to go ahead, just like you guessed at the beginning, uh, you're, you're getting the hang of it, we're going to connect this wire to our red power distribution block, which is going to make sure that it connects to the battery power. So you'll notice there's one slot left in there. And if you remember from before, you're going to connect it to the side with the round holes. You're just going to gently align it and push in until it feels snug. So give it a little bit of a tug, make sure that it's in there. Perfect. Now the last step is going to be to connect your PWM cable to the receiver. So we talked in the video where we set up the drive, that there's channel 1 and 2 on the receiver for drive. So this one's going to go on channel 3, which is going to be your weapon. Now, make sure that you're orienting the cable correctly. So you'll notice, since you already have your drive speed controllers plugged in, yeah, exactly. The brown wire is going to go towards the outside. Now, if you hadn't noticed and that wire was just plugged in backwards, the only thing that would happen is that it wouldn't work. And you wouldn't know why until you started looking through and troubleshooting it. So you would have caught it pretty quickly. Now, she's building a hammer because she's building Grand Slam, but all of the kits, all 10 of the kits, actually work uh, with servo-powered weapons. Next, we're going to install the servo horn to the servo. If you're building a robot with a hammer, we'll have to install the servo gear on first. If you're building any of the other robots, you can skip this step since we'll be using a servo link instead of a servo gear, and we'll install those when we add the weapon itself. But don't skip too far ahead because you'll still need to use the servo jig for all of the robot designs. Here's a look at how to install the servo gear. Your servo came with a little bag that has the servo horn and a little screw to install the servo horn. Your servo horn has a little spline on the inside that's going to mesh with the spline on the outside of the servo itself. Installing the servo gear onto the servo horn is really straightforward. You're going to take the side that has this boss sticking out of it and you're going to put it through the hole on the servo gear. You're going to make sure that these are aligned. You'll see that there's a through hole right there. And all we're going to do is put a screw through the back side. So it's going to be through the white part and threading into the black part. 
for that, you're going to want to use the smaller button head screw that came with your kit. You can install it using your Phillips head screwdriver, just like you have for the other screws. You're going to put it through the white part and just thread it on. Just like all the other parts on your robot, you're actually creating those threads in the plastic parts, so it could be a little bit harder to do the first time, but you shouldn't have any problem installing it. So that's it. Now we have the servo gear onto our servo horn. Okay, now before we install the servo horn onto your servo, we have to go ahead and turn it on to make sure that the servo is in the right position. This will also be a good chance to make sure that we connected everything correctly. Now you want to make sure all your trims are centered on your weapon stick. I'm going to turn my transmitter on, and then I'm going to turn my robot on. You may have noticed that this moved. It might have moved on yours as well. That's because the servo position didn't match the stick position on the transmitter. If your stick is all the way down on your transmitter now, your servo position should match that. If you move the transmitter stick up, you can see that that's spinning. So let's put it all the way down so that when we install the servo horn onto it, it's in the correct position. So go ahead and turn your robot off and your transmitter. And now we're ready to use our servo jig. I'm gonna take the servo jig that came with the hammer kit since that's what we're building. I'm gonna slide it over the servo like this. You want it pointing in this direction. This isn't the same for all of the robots, so make sure to pay attention to which one you have. Now I'm gonna take the gear that's already installed to our servo horn. Like I said before, if you're building a flipper or a lifter, you don't need to have anything on your servo horn right now. We're gonna push just a servo horn on it, but for the hammer, we have the gear. And this part, the part with the boss, is gonna slide right over this spline portion. Now we're gonna install it over like this, but we wanna make sure that it's aligned with this guide that is part of the servo horn jig. You don't wanna put it like this or like this, you wanna get it as close as possible. It's okay if this isn't perfect because we can adjust it with the trim on the transmitter later on to get it perfect. So just go ahead and push it on. This can be pretty hard to push, just push it far enough so that it stays on it by itself. When we install the screw in the center, it's gonna go the rest of the way. So you're gonna take this little black screw that came in the bag with your servo. You'll notice it's a Phillips head screw, so you can use your Phillips screwdriver to install it. And you're gonna screw it in right into that center of the servo horn. Now once it gets a little bit tighter, you'll notice it's actually pulling down the servo horn, so it's helping us install it, because it is a little hard to get that on by hand. I install it so it's nice and snug. Now I can remove this, and our servo horn is in the right position. So let's see how that works now that uh, the servo horn is installed. So I'm gonna turn my transmitter on, I'm gonna turn my robot on. Now since my stick was already down on the transmitter, it stayed in place. Now if I move it up, it goes up and down. And then this gear here is gonna mesh with the gear on our hammer weapon to actuate the weapon. Now let's see what that looks like if you're building a lifter or a flipper robot. You're gonna take the jig that came with your kit. So let's say you're building Whamburger or Big Cheese, one of our two flippers, you're gonna have this one. You're gonna install it over the top just the same. Now you'll notice the angle is different than what we used for our hammer robot. But the process is the same. You're gonna install this as close as you can to that angle. You're gonna press it in just a little bit. And then we're gonna use that screw to pull it all the way down and make sure that it stays attached. If you're building one of our lifter robots, which are Hungry Hippo, Close Encounter, Gimme 5, and Destruction Zone, your jig is going to look like this. So for these robots, you're actually going to take the servo and turn it over like this, and then you're going to put the servo jig over it. The rest of the process is the same. We're going to line this up right over the center spline, matching this angle here. You're going to push it on just enough to stay in place and then you're gonna put your screw in there. Now, if you have a little gap like this with the servo jig, like I said before, that's fine. We're gonna use the trim to adjust that later on. All right, awesome. It looks like we're ready to install this into your robot and start getting closer to adding the weapon.